Hello, differential equation students, and welcome back to unit four. Okay, this is unit number four, and this is our systems unit. Okay, we're going to continue into this unit by looking at section 4.9, where we'll actually get into our very first um, solving method, which is really nice. I mean, it should sound really familiar. We have the elimination method. Okay, we have the elimination method. In the elimination method, um, we're going to be implementing the same type of thing that we did back in uh, just regular old linear equations. So linear equations, right, you had something like this thing here, right? And what you did is you tried to get one of these variables to match. Like it didn't really matter, but you got opposite signs. Like you should know right away that you'd multiply. Like if I was going to get rid of the x's, I would do something like this, right? I'd multiply those through, um, and I should get something to cancel out, okay? Um, in this situation, we're trying to eliminate this x variable, and what we're gonna do coming up here is we're gonna do the exact same thing, but uh, we just have another variable in play, and it's this operator d. Don't forget that d is equal to d, d, and then I'll put like independent here. So typically this is D, the derivative against some independent variable. Like in most cases in the systems, we talk about it as being time as the independent variable. So this will be very common, okay? Way back when I first taught you the operator, it was D dx, okay? Where X is an independent variable. And the way I'm gonna do this video here is I think the easiest thing to do is just do some examples, okay? I'm just gonna do some examples and I'm going to start with this one here that you're looking at. After we do this first example, I'm actually going to stop the video, and then I'm going to make another video over the second example. And then I'm going to make another video over the third example, and then that's going to be it. Okay. Uh, if I get some time, I'm going to try to make a application problem video, but there's a chance that I won't make it. Okay. So here to start us out, let's get some steps. Okay. Step one, write in operator form. Right now I see these D, DTs and sitting in here. Well, I know that T is the independent variable, so D equals D, DT. So when I rewrite this, this is DX equals 4X plus 3Y. This is DY equals 6X minus 7Y. Okay. Well, all right, then what would I do? Well, Typically, right, we, we want to have it in like standard form. So maybe I'll make these into standard form. And you know, I'm thinking at it, I'm, I'm looking at this problem and I think I actually, I typed this in wrong. I'd like this to be a minus sign here. Okay, so when, when I bring it across, it becomes a plus sign. And no, you can't get away with just changing uh, the problem like that. But I uh, I just wrote this one down, and I remember that I wanted that one to be a, a plus sign when it came over. So make sure you have that in there, okay? And then I would have plus 7y equals 0. And now, once we get here to standard form, we have to make a choice. And the choice we're making is we are choosing which variable to eliminate. In this case, you know, we say X or Y, you wouldn't be able to, or even want to actually eliminate the operator. Okay, you don't want to eliminate the operator. So when I'm looking at these, uh, it doesn't look super, maybe straightforward how we do this, because there's a bunch of different X's, right? It's gonna be tough to make this DX match this six X and so on. But we can actually be really clever here. And we see that DX and negative four X share an X. So I can factor out an X leaving me with the exact same stuff left, right? I see this dy and this 7y have y's. Oh, okay. Well, if I keep this in the same order, this is negative 6x, right? And then I would have plus d plus 7, and then there's a y attached to it, right? And now I have it in a nice, like, factored standard form here. And I need to choose an, a variable to eliminate. Let's, uh, let's assume that I want to, like, eliminate... I don't know, X, okay. 
then I'm, I'm thinking about what I need to multiply this top equation by. Well, I know that there's a negative 6x on this x. I don't see a negative 6 up here. Well, then that means I need to multiply through by a positive 6 because I'm going to need one of them to be negative and one of them to be positive. Same type of logic is used down here. Here on this bottom side equation, right, I see this negative 6x, but it's missing this d minus 4. So it would need that. All right, so we give it to it. And now, you know, it's very, very basic math here, right? We're, we're distributing. Okay, you're distributing into all the terms. So I would have d minus 4, 6x plus... 18y equals 0. And then I would have, let's see, d minus 4. And then this is a, a negative 6. And then my x my, or plus d plus 7 times d minus 4 times y equals 0. Okay. Now, of course, it would be a great time. Pause the video. Make sure that you're understanding those steps. Okay, so now that you're good with those steps, I think I'm ready to just straight up add these equations like we did back in Algebra 1. All of this stuff up here, right? All this stuff right here that I'm boxing, gone. Stuff matches. Down here, I would have a D plus 7, D minus 4, plus 18, and those all have a Y. And it equals 0 because these add right to zero. Okay, well, now what? Well, it, although it might not feel like it, we're actually in the home stretch. Okay, here we have a multiplication that we can easily do. This is d squared plus 3d minus 28 plus 18. I still have my y on the outside and my equals zero over here. When I get to here, I think these combine to make negative 10, which then means that it can be factored as d plus 5 times d minus 2. Again, on the outside, I still have this y equals 0, right? But here we're happy. We should be happy, okay? Of course, now would be a great time to pause the video and think why you should be happy. The reason you should be happy is because we've seen an equation like this. We've seen this stuff. This is an auxiliary equation. We've seen this stuff. It's real easy. Of course, we had the trivial solution, y equals 0. That's the trivial solution. We don't usually talk about that. Instead, what do we do? We set these equal to 0, and we get negative 5 or 2. What do we do with those? Well, we know that they were d's here, right? So we know they take on the form of c some constant e to whatever it is, right? Oh, that's negative 5. t plus, oh, c sub 2, e to the 2t. What variable was here? Oh, the y. So it's y of t equals. And there we have our very first half solved. I kind of forgot to write down some steps here. What I just did there was I solved remaining equation. But what did you do before? Think back. Think way back. What did you do after you found one answer? Well, you found the other equation. Well, of course, I could write that down, right? It seems rather simple. But how does that work? Well, if I look up here at the start, actually, Right here is an equation, right? Maybe I'll copy it down. dy dt equals, what was it? Now i got to try to remember. 6x minus 7y, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Here, I have this equation, right? This is supposed to be an answer. So it better work over here. It should, right? It should easily work over here. Well, okay. Here, I chose dy dt, by the way, because I had y. And it's easy for me to find y prime. y prime would be equal to negative 5 c sub 1 e to the negative 5t. And then plus 2 c sub 2 e to the 2t. Okay, pretty easy to find, right? So I take this thing and I'm plugging it in right here. And then I'm taking this y of t 
and I'm plugging it in right here. Okay. If I were to do that, let's see, I'd have a negative 5c sub 1 e to the negative 5t plus 2c sub 2 e to the 2t equals 6x minus 7 times the quantity c sub 1 e to the negative 5t plus c sub 2 e to the 2t. Goal at this point, get this thing by itself. What would I do? I would distribute this right then make a negative 7 c sub 1 but then i bring it over here so really it's just plus 7 c sub 1 e to the negative 5t this would make another negative 7 but i'll bring it over this is plus 7 c sub 1 e to the negative 5 or i'm sorry not 5. i'm bringing this one across so it's 2t and it's a c sub 2. okay these add up right this would be a 2c sub 1 e to the negative 5t plus 9c sub 2 e to the 2t equals 6x. Last thing to do would be to divide. As I divide, that becomes 1 third c sub 1 e to the negative 5t plus 3 halves e. Don't know why I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a c sub 2 e to the 2 t. That equals x of t. Now I have my equation over here. And if I can connect it, my equation up here. Okay, and there's our very first one. Of course, if I was given some initial conditions in the system, just two of them, by the way, just two of them, because these are going to interact together right these this x equation and the y equation interact together all right that is our very first differential equations uh systems being solved using elimination and the operator okay what's coming up next are two more videos okay containing one problem a piece